flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the October 22nd Board of Selectmen meeting. First, we will have a public comment period. Anyone from the public wishing to speak? Yes. I'm Kareen Baker, 244 Exeter Road. I'm not sure if you're aware, but the absentee ballots require a 71 cent postage. The town clerk's office told me that it was 68 cents, but the post office told me it was 71 for Hampton. There's no mention of this on the instructions for completing the ballot, nor on the front of the ballot. I receive emails regarding Board of Selectmen meetings, planning board meetings, DPW projects, and trash pickup. I don't know which department sends these out, but if there's a central file where notifications are sent from, could someone send out a memo telling residents that the absentee ballots require 71 cents? The post office said they generally disregard short paid postage on ballots, but that's not the norm. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for pointing that mm -hmm. out. Anyone else from the public? Yes. Good evening. My name is Ronald Deneve, and I'm a resident of Hampton. And I've been distressed at the non compliance with anything with a little town beach sometimes known as the Joe B. Brown Beach mm -hmm. or the North Beach. The weeds are so thick that it's almost impossible to get through the entry without getting your trousers wet or whatever. And it really seemed to start last winter when they quit plowing it. It is a public parking lot. Yeah. And they didn't plow it, so what we got was the freezing, the melting, freezing and melting. Uh -huh. We had a skating pond. And unfortunately there was somebody who was working on the wall and he had a fork he had a front end loader and he moved it so we got access. But it's it's not just for the summer. Some of us use that beach almost every day. Mm -hmm. A lot of us do. And if they won't do anything for it in the summer, what do I expect in the winter? And I sent emails to each one of the people on the board, and I got it published in the Portsmouth Herald, and I think probably the Hampton Union. My, my worries about the thing, I don't really worry about it, just annoying that you can't get anything done. It's as if there's nobody working. The other thing is they did a decent job of rebuilding the steps down to the beach this spring. And there was valley hoods that were going to get handrails also. And they didn't appear. And now it's going to, I just know it's going to go to pot again because they won't even cut weeds. I thank you for your attention. And I'd like to see some action. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the public? Jay. Hi. <coughs> Hi. I'm Jay Diener, 206 Woodland Road. I'm here as the chair of the Conservation Commission. I want to respond to some comments that Sorkman Group <coughs> made um, at last week's meeting uh, regarding the commission and our conservation coordinator. In an effort to get some information um, he made some vague but potentially significant charges against the conservation coordinator regarding the way she is doing her job. Um, and I understand that he was being somewhat vague in an effort to be respectful of the people who he had spoken with. Um, but I also wish that he had respected the conservation coordinator by sitting down with her and letting her know what he had been hearing and giving her an opportunity to respond, um, which may have avoided this whole issue of having to go public with it. Um, I don't think the way it was handled with all we do respect. I know Rick and, and we talk a lot, 
but I don't think it was right and I don't think it was fair. Um, my second point is that uh, he also said that we're not professionals on the Conservation Commission. Mm -hmm. And that's true, we're not. Um, however, you might be interested to know that some of our members do have related degrees and some of our members through their careers do have related experience. And in that respect, I don't think we are any different than the Budget Committee, than the Zoning Board of Adjustment, than the Planning Board, or even, dare I say, the um, Board of Selectmen. Um, we will, upon occasion, when it's appropriate, bring in independent experts to confirm that um, concerns that we have, for example, about a wetland delineation for a significant project are, are well-founded concerns. So we don't just rely on ex our expertise. We bring in other people when, when needed. We also serve at the pleasure we do of the Board of Selectmen because we're appointed by the Board of Selectmen for three-year terms, just as the other boards and the Board of Selectmen are if you will, appointed by the voters for three-year terms. So if somebody is unhappy with the way we're doing our jobs, there is recourse. Uh, our terms don't have to be renewed. The voters don't have to um, vote for any candidate on any board or commission for another term. Um, thirdly, um, our job, as is everybody's job, is, is to work to enforce the ordinances that were passed by the voters at a variety of town meetings over the years. And we try to do this to the best of our ability. Um, in our case, the ordinances that we're dealing with have to, deal, have to do with the protection of our natural resources, mm -hmm. the protection of our water resources, uh, wildlife habitat, wildlife um, nurseries, as well as providing open space for recreation for all of the town residents. People come to us with wetland permit applications and we work with them to the best of our ability to try to find ways within the specifications of our ordinances to let them do what they want to do on their properties. Um, and in some cases what we try to do is, is help them to rework their projects so they're minimizing the impacts of those projects. In some cases we work with them to try to find mitigation that will help to offset those impacts. So, we really do try hard to work with people to, to allow them to do what they want to do and still respect the ordinances that are, are what we are charged with protecting in this town. We're not always able to do that. There are some cases where the impacts are so significant and we feel so damaging that we have to recommend that that permit not be issued. But even in those cases, we make it clear that we don't have the final say. We are an advisory board to the planning board. Um, it is the planning board that issues wetlands permits. And we tell people they always have the opportunity, even if they don't like what we say, to go to the planning board and to appeal to the planning board and try to get a different resolution. So, so we're not the final arbiter here. All that being said, we, as does everybody else, every other board and commission in Hampton, try to do our job and try to treat people with respect and with integrity and with fairness. And I think that applies to everybody on the Conservation Commission and I think it applies especially to the Conservation Coordinator. Um, if there are people who are unhappy with the way we're doing our job, with the way I'm doing my job, with the way the Conservation Coordinator is doing her job, my office number is 603-758-1177. Call me. I'll be happy to talk to anybody, I'll be happy to listen, I'll be happy to do what I can to resolve any issues that come up. If you're unhappy with me, talk to the town manager. There is always a recourse. But let's treat people with fairness, respect, and integrity. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. And because he brought my name up, I stand by every single thing I said. I talked to Jay for over an hour probably in the last week. He can't, I told him he needs to make sure that his phone number is, that people can see it. He talked to the woman that I had that had the complaint, and he went a long way into helping her. But I do stand by what I had said, and I could say a lot more. Okay. So we have next announcements and community calendar. You have nothing? I don't have anything tonight, Madam Chair. Okay. I have a couple things. We have this Friday, we have a debate uh, yes. for our. 
state reps, our state senator and executive counselor yeah. spots. So if you are interested in that, I believe it starts at 6.30. Come and uh, find out about your candidates, be an educated voter. And one other thing I have is, oh, tell me, Andrew, I had a question about um, the soil line replacement on 101 for the cornerstone. Mm -hmm. Can I bring that up now, real quick? You're the chairperson. <laughs> yeah, because I've had a lot of uh, people ask me that are actually working down at Cornerstone why they aren't able to accept any of their patients because the project has not been started yet. Well, if they had done the work when we suggested last January, rather than holding on until the very completion of the building and all the materials being put in it, and then finding out that they couldn't locate the pipes and couldn't clean them and couldn't get to them, uh. that's the problem. They are scheduled to do that, and they, they put it ahead by uh, almost 10 months before they even started looking. And when they did, they found there were many problems with it. So it's being delayed because of that. Right. It's, it's to nothing that. to do with the town or the town holding it up in any way. Okay. No, it's not. <clears throat> All right. Thank you very much for the clarification. Rick, do you have anything? Yeah, I just want to say that the woman that he talked to, I think that she uh, was able to do a lot better. I did say to Jay that his uh, phone number should be posted there so that people realize they have somebody else to talk to. And um, I could say a lot more about this subject. And at some point I will. Thank you. Okay. Jim, do you have anything? Yeah, is, Renee, is, is trick-or-treating this week? It's the 31st. 31st. So please drive carefully on the night of yeah. trick or treat. Yes. Please watch out for children. Okay. Next week. Next, have next week. Yeah. Yeah. 31st. Do we want to have the town managers? I know Christy's not on the agenda, but she is here to discuss. Okay. All right. We'll go town managers report them. Okay. Madam okay. Chair, members of the board. Uh, the work on Anne's Lane progresses with pavement base course laid on uh, Saturday of this past week. Mm -hmm. No further excavation work, uh, just maintenance work, will occur on the street until spring uh, 2019 when finished pavement will be placed. Good. Uh, there, there, of course, will be raising structures and things of that nature when they go in to place the final pavement so yeah. that everything is nice and level. Uh, for those wishing to make preparations for the Hampton Christmas Parade, the parade is scheduled for Saturday, December 1st. Work is scheduled to begin this week on replacing the sewer line on Tide Mill Road from the wastewater treatment plant to the cell tower entrance. Please expect the rerouting of traffic at the transfer station and Tide Mill Road during this construction period. We've already been in touch with all the residents in that area that are affected. For those working on zoning petition articles, they may be filed with the Board of Selectmen starting November 12th through December 12th. And uh, for those of you who have had to suffer through the holdups of traffic on Route 101 for the bridge construction, it was completed today and the traffic lights were taken down <laughs> and all the cones and other material are gone. Okay. So it's, it's no longer a delay for your transition to whatever place you're going to. That's we've, it, we've been saved. Sort of we've been saved, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Town Manager Wells. Any questions for the Town Manager, Mary Louise? Uh, I have two quick questions. Um, joint operation plan with the state. Now, to the best of my recollection, we have not had one since 2015, or do we have a current one? We have not had one for a little over a year. A little over. Oh, so it was. It's. It went a little long. It's running on, running on pretty close to two years now. Are we going yeah. to be sitting down discussing that? It, will that be part of our meeting on November 1st? or? I can't tell you. That's up to the board. Okay. We should have, uh, perhaps we should put that on uh, for a future uh, agenda because I think we should have a plan with the state as to what's going on. And... Um, are we going to have an actual agenda for the November 1st meeting with the state? With I the believe state Town Council is preparing one. Excellent. That's good. Thank you. Okay. Rick, do you have anything for the Town no. Manager? Thank you. Yeah, just, and if I'm, if I'm incorrect on anything, correct me, please. I mean, it was brought up about the 101 sewer pipe going under for the, the cornerstone and stuff. Mm -hmm. yes. We discovered that that was illegally put in, right, or put in 
improperly? Well, it, actually, it's both. Okay. Um, the line that's there or has been used all this time was put in a drain line, a concrete drain yeah. line the state normally puts underneath yes. their highways. Yeah. Um, there's a state law that says you can't have water within 10 feet of a sewer line. Right. The water was put on top of this sewer line <laughs> inches away. And it appears at some point that some of those pipes had actually collapsed, so they were side by side. So they've now pulled all that out. The water has been rerouted to a new location to eliminate that problem. Uh, and uh, we've not he heard any problems with the, the water line that was there because the sewer line was in the same manhole or the same pipe. Yeah. Uh, they're currently a new line. They've cleaned the existing line. They pulled all the piping out, cleaned it. Um, we, they have inserted a new sleeve within the sleeve and they are putting the piping in and they will fill that with grout so there's no distance, mm -hmm. the pipe can't move, it can't fluctuate yeah. or flutter so it won't break. And it was, it was through your work and the assistant town manager in the, in the town council that the town is not paying for that, right? That is correct. Oh, that all, it's all being done by, li and it, at first they wanted us to pay, right? They wanted us to take responsibility. They wanted us to pay for all the new piping. They wanted us mm -hmm. to pay for excavation of Route 101. They wanted us to pay for everything at one point in time. And the town's answer was, no, this is all private property. Right. So, I mean, it was, it was through the, the efforts of you guys here at Town Hall that, that we got that done and got it corrected and got it without us paying for it. That would have been another $2 million probably by the time we finished. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Oh, and one on your number three for the marsh pipes. That is for the installation of the permanent marsh pipes we just approved at the special town well, Actually, this, this is the portion that runs from the wastewater treatment plant to the entrance of the cell tower. Okay. Where those marsh, new marsh pipes, when they're put in, will, will terminate. Uh, we, we have to replace that because we currently have a 30-inch or 28-inch pipe running down Tide Mill Road, I believe it is. And it's going to take a 36-inch pipe running down Tide Mill Road to take all the sewage right. that would be fed to it from the various locations. Yeah. So that portion needs to be replaced now before we can do the portion under 101 or next to 101. And do we have all the permits we need from DOT? We have all the permits we need. We just don't have a permit to excavate. That's the one that's been held up for a while. They have, they have ordered that uh, starting November 15th, we must cease work within the state right away mm -hmm. and cannot resume until April 15th next year which changes the sequence of construction if that we have an appeal in for that so right. hopefully the appeal will be granted if it's not granted then instead of finishing by early may before the beach opens we will finish in early october so we'll after the beach closes whole season uh on, a, on a, a very old pipe that could at any time go and cause us severe problems, yes. Well, hopefully they'll listen to our appeal. Well, we have our fingers crossed that everything works okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Town Manager. Did okay. you have Rick? No, nope. Rick was all said, he said. No, I mean, well, I just, because I... She I, asked I, if I wanted to, any to comment. I said no. Okay. I just didn't want you left out. I, I, I do have one out. more quick one uh, yes. on Cornerstone. Yeah, yeah, I sat yes. as a selectman representative on the planning board, on the Conservation Ouch. Commission, when Cornerstone was first coming up. They knew perfectly well oh, at that time, and that would have been like 2015. It was a long time ago. Yes, and they, they had everything laid out specifically for them at that time. But that's okay. Like Jim pointed out, town management and assistant Gee, town management and town risk. council made through it, so the town's not at risk or anything. So we're I, good, and we are moving forward. It makes you wonder. Okay. So next we have budget discussions. Ah. And I see there's a couple people here that are going to represent their budget, so I'd like to have them go first. Good. So the first one on the list would be library. <laughs> ah. Good evening, Amanda. Okay. Let me go first. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> I was just uh, letting Amanda know that um, she does need to make one request to her budget right out of the gate, so to speak. Um, we have received the health insurance rates 
So we now know whether there's an increase or a decrease, and we can report that, yes, there is an increase. Um, medical across the board for all the different plans the town offers is going up 7.3%, and dental is going up 2%. So to cover the employees that um, the library currently has and um, have coverage, that line needs to be adjusted to $100,895. So. Health when we insurance. put these budgets together, we always know that we're waiting for certain items. And when it's my turn in a little while, we'll know that um, in personnel administration, we'll have to do the same thing. The so figure again? $100,895 needs to be put onto her medical line, or her health insurance line, I believe is how it is. Mm -hmm. So okay. Thank I you. just wanted to give you that little update. Thank okay. you, Amanda. It's all yours. <laughs> Thank you. So my budget has very few changes in it, <laughs> partly because of those health insurance rate increases. Um, we knew going in, we had a policy we added at the beginning of 2018, but we were in a default budget, so we've been scraping to pay, try to pay for it this year, but again, we need to ask for it for 2019. Um, I also have a staff member who will be um, taking a couple's plan, and so that adjustment has to be made as well, and then we need to make the the rate increase change. And so those are really the three drivers for the changes in my budget. I have, there's a small decrease in the rate for the New Hampshire retirement and a small increase in my HVAC maintenance. The two of those cancel each other out. It comes within $4 of each other. So really the only change to the entire library budget is health, health insurance related. Thank you. Questions on the board? It's just our, our bottom line now, um, Christy? Instead of the 882606. 983-501. Oh, wait, no, 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 hold on. Let me take off the 30 on that. Eight eight four four eleven. Four eleven. Okay. Thank you. It's so about an additional $1,800, something like exactly. that. Exactly. Yep. Okay. I'll be happy to move that figure. If I, you... I have a question. Yeah. yeah. So in, in 17, the health insurance was 69000 mm -hmm. And then because of the budget, it was sixty two. so this year. But then it goes it goes up to a hundred thousand. What I mean is that all because of the increase, or is that is that because There's, of added staff? So, the full time staff member who added a plan in twenty eighteen, and next year there'll be a couples plan. Okay. So right. yeah. So it's so all. It's but it's not new staff. It's staff. No, there. exactly. Staff that didn't take the insurance prior. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Rick, do you have anything? No, you've done a nice job with your budget. Thank you. Yeah, and I just want to, I'll second your motion, Mary Louise, and I also want to say that I think Amanda does a really good job, and I've been talking to her on some other things besides her budget, and she has some uh, nice community events and a strategic plan that uh, maybe one day we can have her in to discuss. I think it's something that would be really nice for the community. So, so to confirm, we're moving $884,411 for her 2019 budget as approved by the Board of Selectmen. Correct. Okay. I'm in favor. So we're voting on that tonight. We didn't vote on the ones last week. We, we it's left up those to the board whether or not Yeah, you we vote left or those or till uh, I don't know when, but It's a little budget and it's Well, yeah. if you if we want to leave them to like we did with the other ones, I don't have a problem doing that. Okay, and yeah, we'll I have a full either. board too. Yeah. yeah. So, all right, I we mean, can do that. And then I would also if you choose to do that, um, whatever changes you make on any of the budgets tonight, I can put those in and then we'll make sure that we have all the exact numbers too. Okay, that's okay. good. So, good. Okay, good so if we're going forward tonight, we will not approve any. We will just review and have any questions answered. Yeah, and if you make changes though tonight, okay. then if you let me know if you have to vote on those changes or whatever, if I know the changes, I can implement those and then you'll have the exact numbers before the meeting next week. Perfect, thank you. 
Thank you. Man. Thanks for Thank all you. you do at the library. Thank Friends you. of the Library book sales coming up on Wednesday, <laughs> November 14th through Saturday, dangerous. November 17th. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. <laughs> okay, next we have the town planner and the planning board budget as well, Jason. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. All right. Um, the planning board's budget is uh, pretty straightforward. Um, it is um, 151.317 is the total. That's a 1.85% uh, change. Um, the only item that's really changing here actually is staff development. Um, that is increasing from 1240 to 1500. Um, the reason for that change is to provide some additional. Uh, you know, training opportunities for the office manager and also now that I have the certified floodplain manager credential for the extra um, membership and uh, training opportunities for that. So actually we had that in our budget last year, but because we're in a default budget, we didn't get that last year. Also reflected in that 151.317 is um, something that was added after the budget was submitted related to the MRI wage study for the uh, office manager as well to bring her halfway to the minimum step. I, I understand other people may have had the same added to theirs, but that's only in the amount of $146 as you could probably see in the, in the detail that was provided. Um, we do not have a wage increase incorporated in because um, the board had decided to go under the, um, the um, the line increase that you had last year that you had awarded um, earlier for others that Lori and I weren't part of will be part of that next year as um, as a result of that the adjustment line that you did um, but really everything else is exactly the same um, I will note um, for your interest um, revenues um, I checked with Christy our revenues as of September of this year are 32,308 and we're not really a revenue generating department so that that should give you an indication of how much we have coming in um, October 31st last year we were at 29,530 and the year before the same we were at 24,178 so progressively it should give you an idea of the number of applications and the, the magnitude yeah. of the applications that are coming into our office um, but as I said otherwise everything's the same pretty straightforward and I will entertain any questions you may have Maybe you have any so the 151317, Jason, is yes. your bottom line right now for next year. Correct. Excellent. I have no problem with that. Okay. I'm set. No, it's very ex okay. understandable. Thank you. Thanks. Good job, okay. Jason. I'm all yep. set with the budget, but I just had one question about what you said. Yeah. When you said that you're going to be part of the merit line, is that what the, he's going to? Yeah. The. Uh, yeah, okay, that's going to now be the town planner and the... Right, the town planner and the office manager would be included. So you had okay. the adjust, adjustment line that you had uh, taken a vote on at, at a meeting prior, I think, April or May. Um, the planning board right. had okay. responded by taking a vote in June to, to right. incorporate us and, and give us actually a 2% increase from another line item um, this year was contracted services and dues to, to match what you had provided. Okay, I got you. I just wanted to make so, sure it was clear. Yeah. All right, so I'm sorry if I didn't much. clarify that for you. No, okay. no problem. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Thank okay. you, Jason. I think we're all set. Great. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Okay, and next we have recreation and parks. Good evening. Um, there we my official first budget with you guys so uh, <laughs> going over this some of the numbers I have on here might jump out at you a little bit um, but there's some good uh, reasoning behind them um, the first thing to look at is under the administration line item it shows a 50% increase in our uniforms which brings it from 500 to 750 it's not you know super huge money but in the past, we've only had a couple of staff members with uniforms. Um, now that we do multiple trips, we have multiple drivers. Uh, we also have our park staff that need rain coats, rain pants. Um, we have sweatshirts and then staff shirts, just in general polos. And we have some turnover that we also need to make adjustments for with uniforms. So I up that to make sure that our whole department is fully visible and looking like they should. Um, so that's $250 there, so 50% is actually not it 
looks bigger than it is. Um, honestly, the biggest item I have is under maintenance of parks, grounds and fields has a huge increase. Yeah. Um, and that is, I would like to say it's a wish list of all these new things I'd like to do, but it's actually trying to take care of existing issues that I feel are safety related. Um, I recently walked the park with the public works director to look at all the trees on the perimeter of Tuckfield and some of our playground parks. And what we found out is there's dead trees, there's limbs, there's pruning, there's issues with lots of trees there. He has no tree budget or it's zeroed out at the moment. We had one limb that we did an emergency removal of because it was very serious and it yeah. was right over a playground. Um, and this number, the 15,000 I have in there, is a number that I talked to Christy about and I said, should it be under public works, under the tree warden, or right. should it be somewhere? I don't even know if that number is gonna be sufficient for the work that needs to be done, but I know what I have work that needs to be done, whether you move it to public works under the tree warden budget or keep it under mine, it makes my line item go way up, yeah. but that's what it is. It's not something that I'm trying to add because it's gonna be super fun and stuff. It's to keep the kids safe. Um, there's lots of limbs that overhang our, our sports fields, mm -hmm. and that's a big concern for me. So I put that number in there. Um, we are waiting for some estimates to come back from tree, tree companies um, regarding the whole perimeter of our fields. Um, so I put that in there. Yeah. depending on how that wants to go. Um, the other big things in that line item that I feel needed to be addressed, I added in tennis court maintenance. Uh, what happens, we have these great tennis courts that everybody loves, but once they get a crack in them, every year yeah. they expand, yeah. they need to be sealed. It expands, it needs to be sealed. Mm -hmm. We have nothing in the budget right now to, to cover that. Um, and I also did that with the tuck field baseball backstops. They're all old fencing that's curling in and all the sharp edges are right about where a kid can go up and catch the ball and it's a safety issue that I th think we need to address. And then the other ones that show up on there is parking lot lights. Our parking situation down at Eaton Park and Tuckfield, depending on where you're looking, there are no lights. It is really dark at night mm -hmm. and we have you know certain Monday mornings in the summer we're always picking up in certain park of the parking lot and it's dark nobody can see you kids go down there and hide in their cars and we're trying to alleviate that by opening it up and having some safety so mm -hmm. people can see Good. especially at Eaton Park with the playground being close by so if we can add some lights down to those two facilities I think that would help Good. open up and stop some of the issues we've had with vandalism and stuff like that Definitely. and then as far as uh, the maintenance of facilities goes I added it's been at $2,000. I added you know, maintenance to the sheds. We have no line item anywhere for shed repairs. Uh, I think the shed that's down there is probably 15 years old. It needs new side, not siding, but trim pieces uh, around the doors. Just basic stuff, it started to rot. It hasn't been painted. Um, and then the roof is got all that mossy stuff on it. And cause that's cause some of the trees are overgrown over it and it stays wet all the time. So if we can take care of the trees, it may keep that a little longer too. And then the cave building, uh, I asked for doors. That was built in 2002. Those doors are all but shot on the bottom of them. The bottom foot of them is pretty much rotted. Um, if they wanted to probably get in, they could. So I wanna address that safety issue also. So I think that's about it as far as changes goes. Any questions? Mary Louise? Yeah, Renee, yep. the, um, in your Let's see, grounds and fields. Mm -hmm. So the 47,000 would help you on what you've just described? Is that, is that where the money would come out of? The new, the new items I added. Um, where, where are they showing on here? On the bottom of grounds and fields, the only adjustments I made was at the bottom uh, where it says tennis courts. Park in the bottom five. Oh, I'm items. reading on the top sheet here. Okay. In the middle, it's got grounds and fields, and then the bottom five items are the new ones that I've adjusted or added in. Baseball park maintenance. 
Okay. Yep, the ones Parking underneath lot that. lights. So yep. you've got that all under the grounds and field floor. Right. Now, are the trees on that too? Let me I see. added the, the trees are on the very bottom of that item, that line. And like I said, that's something I put in there to put in there. Um, it needs to there be it somewhere. Is. Okay. It's just a matter of if you want it to be in my budget or the tree Did you wardens. happen to check with Public Works on the tree removals? We walked the park with Chris, and oh. I did talk with him, and he, he has a zero. His tree budget is shot at the moment, so yeah, I know that. we walked the park with the tree companies yeah. to show them everything that needed to be yeah. adjusted, cut down or adjusted or trimmed, or, and they're uh, getting us their estimates on those. Okay. And that's incorporated in the 47 and change? Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. You're doing, uh, you're good, doing a lot of stuff. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're working hard. Thank you. Greg, do you have anything? No, you, um, it sounds like you're doing a great job down there, and you have uh, picked, I've picked up uh, that you've got a few interesting ideas, like the roof, like you just mentioned. Mm. And that type of stuff is common yeah. sense and should be taken care of yeah. in the way that you mentioned. So I appreciate your budget looks great. Thank, Thank you. you. I think the, the staff shirts are good. It makes you guys look professional. It's difficult for some of you, but it makes it look it. Thank you, Jim. Uh, I, I also, how many people use Tuck Field and Eaton Park there? Well, the season, right now, the season for soccer and football is ending um, in our flag football program. The Hampton Youth Association has upwards of 400 kids uh, in their soccer program that is on Tuck Field Saturday from 8 a.m. to about 3 o'clock. Uh, Little Warrior Football, I think their number is around 1 to 150, I believe. I think they've had some um, declining numbers, but they still have, they practice four days a week down there. Um, and then we have our flag football program, which has 220 kids from uh, ages third grade through 12th grade. Wow. So they're on there Saturdays. They're done at Lou Brown at the same time. Um, and then they do play some Sunday afternoons, which I don't want Sunday mornings, but we do have to do some things on Sunday afternoons. So. And Hampton Academy? Hampton Academy soccer also uses our soccer field because they don't have enough space over at their facility. And in spring and summer, you have the baseball? We have, um, we have sometimes have Sacred Heart Baseball. We have Hampton Academy Baseball. And I think that's it for baseball, besides our Hampton Youth Association, which uses all the baseball fields just about from April to July. So, so I mean, you would say it's a well-used facility. It's overused with <laughs> need for more space. Yeah, and, and it's a safety issue with the trees. Most definitely. Oh, yep. yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. No question about that. Yeah, I'm good with the budget, and I just want to also note and just – be positive with the finance director that the first two line items, regular wages and part-time wages, are increased by the admin to adjust for the MRI study we had done, correct? Do we yes. have the new total? No, no it's already in there. It's already in there? Yep. Good. Okay. Okay. That's what I thought it said. And, yeah, I'm good with everything you brought forward. I think yes. it needs to be done. A great job. Thank nice you. Nice budget. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And now I assume we're going to have Christy present the rest. <laughs> you want to just go in order now, or that would be great to go back and start at the beginning and just go down the list? Does that work for everyone? Mm -hmm. All right, so welfare is first. The only thing in the welfare budget that changed is the wages, and that was related to the uh, that position in that department is the Teamster position, and the Teamster's contract passed. I believe they had 2.7%, I believe, was the increase. However, hers is up 7 because she also had missed at least one step because she's up to the 10-year step now. So that's why the increase looks a little bit higher than what the union contracts were. It took me by surprise, but I just redid the math to make sure that there wasn't a mistake there. So um, that's what's in the welfare budget. That's the only change. Yeah, that's all I saw, right, Fred? I don't that's think the only else. change. Yeah. Yeah. Do we need to discuss this further? Or? I don't have a problem. 
Okay, so we can move on to the next one is cemetery. Yep, and Fred will probably, I think Fred has worked <laughs> on that, so Fred, do you want to okay. take that one? Just uh, dying to get in there. Yeah. Huh. You did most of the work there, so. Oh, I didn't get it. Oh, I, I got, got it. <laughs> <laughs> I saw, I no pun intended. And I said, why is she laughing? And then I just got it. <laughs> slow, <laughs> slow. <laughs> Need to have a little levity when you uh, get into some of these budgets. Oh, Definitely. Um, the cemetery budget is up 81.61 percent. A lot of that is because work has been neglected down there. Uh, we actually spent um, the last time we took trees, we took it out of the public work budget. There was eight thousand dollars worth of trees taken down that were in danger of actually falling. Uh, they were badly split. Most of them were full of ants' nests, uh, and they were in, they were endangering the Dearborn Monument, which is the 40-foot mm -hmm. yeah. monument, the largest monument in the cemetery uh, that was donated to the town. Uh, that's that had to be replaced. We we couldn't afford to do it. It would take the whole the whole uh, cemetery budget times about five to get that done. So. Um, the cemetery trustees uh, have um, uh, gone up 9.6% in the budget on the wages. Uh, that's simply because they have hired two, they're hiring two additional employees next year because of the amount of work that needs to be done in the cemeteries. Part time wages um, up 91.96%. Those are where the two, the, that's the, the whole wage pictures together, but the two te temporary people will be on that particular line. Uh, they did give some raises. There haven't been raises given in the cemetery department in several years. Health insurance uh, is it tends to be a blanket. Uh, the current sexton would uh, be paid that as, as a health insurance uh, stipends from the town. Social Security, of course, depends upon the wages. Uh, Medicare, the same way. New Hampshire Retirement Group 1 is the same way. That's only the sexton gets paid for that. Um, Contracted services, I'll probably ought to go to the list because there's, there's quite a few things that are on the list. Reburials, uh, moving, of, moving of existing vaults, moving of headstones, mo uh, moving of cremations, and reinterment of uh, unburied cremations. Um, along with tree removal, uh, stump grinding and stone cleaning and repair. We have a number of chipped stones and uh, things that need to be repaired. Uh, we have some people that are buried in the wrong places and we have to move them into their existing lots where they're supposed to be. But we have to give them new lots because in fact they never bought lots but they were buried anyhow. Um, that involves moving the vault. Everything's inside the vault. It's all contained. We're not opening anything. It just means the vault gets picked up and put in a different position, different place. Uh, cremations are something that's, as you know, they're small urns. Uh, again, buried in the wrong place, have to be moved. As long as it's within the existing cemetery, there's no general problem with doing that, and all these are within the existing cemetery. Tree, emergency tree removals, $2,000. Uh, that comes from, and you'll, you'll see we're going to have a warrant article for $50,000 for more tree removals in the cemetery. But emergencies come about simply because some of the trees are, are in bad shape and need to be removed. Stump grinding, of course, goes along with that. Stone cleaning and repair, we have a number of stones that need to be repaired. A lot of those are because of the, the trees. We have large pine trees in the cemetery. Mm. We have stones that are in some, gravestones in some cases that are a foot to a foot and a half to two feet off the ground yeah. because the roots are just pulling right up out of the ground. Yeah. Uh, so we need to repair those and put them back in their proper settings. Mm. Um, we had uh, 12 uh, burials that were not marked and uh, the <laughs> trustees of just authorize uh, putting stones in their place, which won't happen, I believe, until next year because of the amount of money that's left. <clears throat> Telephone, electric, and heating fuel uh, are all up a little bit. Um, 
<clears throat> telephones flat, uh, heating fuel, or excuse me, electric is up um, $50, uh, heating fuel is up $500, and water is flat. Repairs and maintenance to equipment goes from uh, $3,000 down to $2,200. Supplies and expenses from $2,500 under, up to $8,750. Let me just go across that list for you. <clears throat> Fireproof records storage cabinet to keep all the town's records in that are at the under the cemetery trustees and <coughs> are not currently protected. Necessary office supplies, uh, safety equipment. Uh, the employees have some safety equipment, but they don't have the re equipment required by our insurance carrier, so we need to purchase that equipment. If they're using chainsaws or they're using weed whippers, there are certain types of equipment they have to have on to protect themselves. Uh, safety boots, uh, that's something that really hasn't been happening in the past. Grass seed, grass treatments. Um, the back side of the cemetery, which is substantial in size, um, they proceeded to uh, rake up the leaves in that area and found there was no grass because it's so badly infected with uh, grubs in the ground. They've eaten all the grass, all the grass roots, so oh. we need to treat them for grubs. They're, they're in the top surface of the ground. They're not endangering any of the vaults or anything. Um, but we need to keep grass there so that we can we can keep the mud to a minimum uh, because obviously we don't want that in the cemetery. Uh, hand tools, there are some hand tools that are always necessary when you're doing work with uh, lawn equipment and so forth. Uh, there's filters for the equipment and those sorts of things, which, which is the same. Miscellaneous parts, fittings, bolts, etc., which remains the same. Uh, but it's still a large account simply because we need to do certain things that have not been done. Mm -hmm. Gasoline, uh, that's something that's we go by the, the, the things that are set in there by the finance department based upon actual use of gallons yeah. and how much that costs. And we pick a, a representative sample of that. Cemetery improvements of $5,000 that deals with cleaning and repairing the stones by and large. Uh, there will be quite a number of stones that need to be reset simply because they've been rooted right out of the ground with the trees, the tree roots, particularly the pines. Um, they need to have uh, replacement mowers. Uh, the mowers that the town has been buying up until this point in time for replacement equipment are things that you would use in your yard, not something you would use in a large cemetery. <clears throat> so we need to buy better mowers. Um, in order to keep them for a longer period of time. We need to have toad, wheeled toad spreaders. If we're going to treat uh, the grass and the area up there to keep things alive and, and healthy, uh, we need to spread the material that's used to do that. And of course, we need to replace weed whippers on a regular basis because they wear out. So that pretty much encompasses the library, uh, excuse me, the uh, cemetery budget. Um, we're trying to do catch up over a long period of time, and it's going to cost some money to do that. Anyways. To whom do the secret uh, do the cemetery trustees uh, report? Who is in charge of overseeing the trustees? The electorate. Ah. Uh, neglect over many many years. I would take it. Looking at this mess. It's inattention it's, to detail, I think. Well, I mean, you may call that neglect, but I call it inattention to detail because certain things have to be done in order to maintain a good cemetery. Well, I realize that. And, and I, they're not being done. I would... Uh, huh. um, do, the trustee, do the current trustees, do you feel, understand what needs to be done here? I, I'm, I, not, I'm not I, trying to put you... No, um, I, I haven't asked them that question. I think they, they have an understanding as we work through the budget that there are certain things that their sexton has told them they need to do along with their employees, and I've tried to reinforce that. Uh, their understanding of the budget has come a long way since we started putting it together. So I think they're getting knowledge on what needs to be done. Um, 
I mean, we have a lot of valuable equipment up there. Yes. And a lot of it's stored outdoors, the trucks and so forth. They need to be, yeah. they need to finish the building that's there and probably need to do another addition to it at some point in the near future yeah. in order to get their equipment indoors and protect it. And, and like the old uh, cemetery plots that we talked about earlier, uh, you know, and the, you, uh, the old abandoned cemeteries but that you uh, lined up and, and we uh, are looking at, um, the cemetery is an important place for residents, relatives, etc. cetera. Um, do the trustees understand that they have to have meetings and post meetings and uh, have uh, minutes prepared and something so the public knows what the heck is going on? We, uh, we've insisted that happen and that has been happening since, Thank you. Uh, since March. Um, they've had regular meetings. We have posted those meetings. Cemetery minutes have been taken and they've been doing things that are similar to the way the Board of Selectmen runs your yeah. board and the things that you do, we've insisted they do the yeah. same thing. We've worked them through that yeah. process. They're yeah. all relatively new commissioners. Yes. Well, there's, there's certainly hope on the horizon, but this is a very sad situation that this town has gotten into this with is... years of, of uh, neglect <coughs> or whatever proper term you want to choose. This is a, this is a long-term program. Just the trees in the cemetery, um, we took down these five large pine trees around the Dearborn Monument because yeah. they were endangering the monument. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, I'm walking around up there inspecting other trees and I'm finding huge holes with large carpenter ants going in and out of the trees. These are trees that are 125, 150 yeah. feet tall. Um, it would take three grown men to get their arms around the base yep. and these trees could go any time. Yep. Uh, so we have a lot of trees up there that need to be taken down yet. In fact, there really shouldn't be pine trees or any other trees located in the cemetery. Right. Bushes are one thing, but these mm -hmm. are large, large trees. These, these trees run 100 to 150 feet tall. Yep. Uh, they need to be removed before they do more damage to the cemetery. Absolutely. That's a big price. So well, we're talking probably the next four or five years at this expenditure level in order to get things back in proper yeah. shape. Just the roads alone. Yeah. to do just an overlay on the roadways yeah. that are in there is half a million dollars mm -hmm. because they've been, they haven't been touched since the day they were put down. They're in neglect. Well, this is hopeful, I, and I appreciate the presentation here. I just hope we can build on this going forward so we don't have an accumulation of <coughs> problems. We're trying to. Rick, did you have anything on this budget? No, thank you. Thank you, sir. Jim? Obviously, if somebody looks at this budget, they can see there have been some, as, as already stated, some major problems. Yes, there have yes. been. And we're trying diligently to correct them and do things correctly. Right, right. It's sir. very important for the people who live in this town. Uh, my personal philosophy, and I've held one of these jobs before, is that the way people, the, people in the community maintain their cemeteries and respect the people who have gone before them indicates how well they respect the people who are there now. Right. Yeah. And I think the High Street Cemetery is already looking so much better. Yeah, we've done a lot of work there. Oh, yeah, it's tremendous. And I also think that we we have a new cemetery section. Sexton, Sexton now, yes. correct? Yes, that's so. correct. And the O working and the Board of Trustees is working with town management right if they have any questions we're all trying to work together right. to get this, so, this problem solved I think it's on its way to getting solved so thank you very much yeah. town manager all right this has fallen on Fred mostly and, no. and you've done a good job uh, bringing us into the modern <laughs> modern times Correct. good grief okay next we have the board of selectmen and town managers budget uh, well, there is no change in the selectmen's budget. It has remained the same. Yep. Uh, zero percent increase. There is a change in the town manager's budget of 1.85 percent increase, which relates to the changes that were made by the board of selectmen uh, for wages uh, this past year and are now coming into fruition in this particular budget for a full year. And I think we probably ought to make the comment of 
when wages are uh, are increased, they're increased effective April 1st because that's the selectman's policy. Right. So right. we have 39 weeks of increased wages, but there are 13 weeks mm -hmm. that are not paid in that first calendar year, which are going to catch up with us in the following year. So there's, there's going to be a small increase in the following year. Thank you very much for that explanation. Mary Louise? Yes, I do have some uh, quick. Under the uh, staff development, training and workshops for assistant town manager, what what is the purpose of those training and workshops? Well, we're trying to increase the depth of our knowledge uh, across the staff of various areas of town government and municipal government. All right. uh, there are a lot of those areas, and there, some of them are changing rapidly. Uh, so we feel it's, it's to the town's advantage uh, to train the assistant town manager in those new areas because he eventually is going to be responsible for reporting those things and monitoring them for the Board of Selectmen. Um, did, have you expended money on these uh, training uh, experiences in the year 2018? We do every year. We have been seeing we, these. We, we uh, do it every year. Used. Uh, and we, what we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of changes come about because of legislation that's well, yes. conquered. Well, yes. Yeah. And that's uh, frustrating sometimes because the legislation out, outstrips our ability to, to track <laughs> the new legislation, <laughs> and we actually have to find inventive ways to right. try to get learning in, in, right. in place. And then my only other comment in this area is supplies, under supplies and expenses, the NHMA dues. The NHMA dues are 18,576. They're not in this section. Beg pardon? The NHMA dues are not in this section. That's, That's for the correct. town manager and the assistant town manager dues. NHMA dues are under this personnel This is only for the manager. This is the New Hampshire Municipal Management Association. Yeah. That's an extra M That's in there, the right? That's for the manager and the deputy manager. They're $100 a piece. Okay. Good, because I was a little horrified when I saw the difference. So okay. that's the NHMA conference? No, he, she's no. looking under supplies and ex oh, expenses. Right. There's an extra oh. M in there. So okay. it's the New Hampshire Municipal okay. Managers Association, correct, Fred? That's yeah, the, that's correct. There's an extra M in there, and that's the dues. They're $100 each, like Fred said. That's correct. Okay. okay. Anyone else have any questions on this? Project? I don't have a problem with the, this no. section. No, you've done a great job, it. Fred. With uh, thank you, sir. We're, we're trying. Mm. I am all set with this budget as well. Where are we going? So Patriotic are going? purposes and it is zero percent. What? Patriotic purposes is next. Oh, okay. And it's at zero percent increase. Right. Is it there? Oh. That's the flag it's a pretty for the little veterans' tab. It's orange. It's after library. It's way down the end. Yeah. Okay. It's two thousand uh, three hundred and fifty dollars. It's the same that it's been for many, many years. Okay. It's a orange tab right after the yeah. blue library one. It's the there second it tab is. down. And flower gardens. Yeah. 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 Flower Gardens also has a zero percent. Patriotic increase. purposes pays for the flags put on veterans' graves in the various cemeteries. Yeah. Okay. We all set with patriotic purposes. Yeah. Okay. So next we have general government buildings. Those places that need maintenance. Uh, That's an orange tab yeah. at the top, back from the library. Tab at the top. Ah, gotcha. Thank you for the colored tabs. <laughs> <laughs> it helps identify yes. things. Yep. The real increase here is in custodial services mm -hmm. for the building. Um, we have noticed that uh, the time that we've allocated to clean the building and keep it clean is insufficient. The building's getting older. It's requiring more and more time to get it cleaned out each day. Uh, so this represents uh, an increase, a small increase in the number of personnel. We now have two part-time people working to clean the building, and we will have next year. Yeah. Um, okay. We want to make sure that the building represents the community, and we want to make sure it stays clean. So. It is a 55.83% increase. We're going from 13,800 to 20,725. 
uh, to get those two part-time employees to get them in here and keep this building in good shape. The building's getting older, it's requiring a lot more work, and we also do work as individual employees during the course of the day to try to keep the building in shape. So you'll see when we get to uh, building maintenance, for instance, uh, we have uh, gone from uh, 29,860 to 34,284. Uh, right now we're looking at uh, changing the heating system in the tax collector's office because it's so cold in there in the winter time that the uh, girls actually have to wear parkas to work in on a windy day. So we're looking at correcting that. We have some other problems to correct in the building dealing with heat and uh, not air conditioning but with heat. Um, the drive up window, for instance, needs to be completely replaced. That will come next year so we can get that done. There will be a warrant article to replace the interior door, front door, so that we can have that one handicapped accessible. And that will we'll be asking in the warrant article, if the board's agreeable to it, to take that $15,000 from surplus. It's something that needs to be done yes. so that we can be in compliance with handicapped accessibility. Yeah. That's not in the budget, but it's there. Uh, electric bills are relatively fat, tw flat, 21.6 to 22,000. Uh, heating fuel, 8,900 to 9,000. Uh, water, $3,010 to 2,505. That's the result of a rate decrease that they're projecting. And building maintenance from 29,860 to 34,284. There are systems that we need to replace in the building if we're going to continue to use it. Okay. Anyone have any questions on this budget? I don't have any problems. I would just like to say that um, after having been here for many years, I can tell you the building is visibly cleaner than, it us than it's been in the past. That's particularly true for the bathrooms. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it shows, and I think it's money well spent. It goes yeah. a long way to making it a happy workplace. Yeah. It does, and it took a lot of effort to get the bathrooms finally cleaned, and I know we've talked about that before mm -hmm. because they were in terrible condition. Yeah. We're still working on that to try to get them even cleaner because it needs to happen. <laughs> yeah. We're doing a great job. Thank you, sir, and, and our staff is doing a tremendous job helping us getting this done. Okay, so we all set on general yep. government? What's next? Next Finance. One is finance. Finance, okay. Money, people. That's me. There it is. Red. So the finance part, the finance department is at 4.1% or 4.10%. It's mostly related to wages. Um, the majority of the individuals in the department are part of the Teamsters Union contract, which hadn't passed for um, at least two years, I think. So um, they have some pay increases in there, plus the... 2% that was given to non-union in 18 is in there. Under part-time wages, um, we have the records archive clerk, and the reflection there is in regards, that was one of the positions on the MRI study mm -hmm. that wasn't yeah. at the minimum level, so you as a board voted to move everyone halfway to the minimum, so that's calculated in there. The other thing I did add is under elected officials, which is the town treasurer, I put that in at 4%, um, with the reasoning behind that being that she didn't get a raise in 18 because it was a default budget. So oh. I was giving her the two that I had in the 18 budget plus the two that's put into the 19 budget for non-union to keep her level with us. And other than that, there's just some minor changes in um, the line for like supplies and stuff because there's been a slight increase to like town reports and things like that but if you go down here I think the besides the 4.75 and the 5 in wages the next increase is like 7 percent and then there's other lines that are down 12 so it kind of all balances out there <clears throat> okay do we have any questions Mary Louise oh yes I found this three times now tax collector town clerk and in the treasurer. I have a great respect for our treasurer, but I think it's an insult to the public that voted a default budget to find a, uh, an elected official 
uh, trying to grab the 2% raise that would have been given had it not been a default budget and piggyback that on the next year. I think a 4% raise is an insult to the public and I'm going to say the same thing when I get to tax collector and town clerk. I am very offended by, say, by someone saying that uh, we didn't get what we wanted in 2018, so we're going to double it for 2019. I just need to clarify right there that the town treasurer had, I just did that myself as that's been the past practice. She didn't request anything. Okay. Okay, oh. so um, I'm still very you can offended. feel the way that you feel, but don't feel it towards Ellen because Ellen okay. didn't come in into my office and demand a 4%. <laughs> uh, no, I did I, that for the right reason that... Yeah. She hadn't gotten anything. No. That's been the past way that we've handled it. So, yeah. but when the public um, says that would be shame on me, not shame on Ellen. When the public's, oh, I'm not trying to shame you, but when the public yeah. says no, they mean no, and you don't try to make it up in the okay. following year. How how many hours a week does Ellen work? I have no. We say like no. 40. Oh, not for no. us, no. Okay, because. I'm just trying to figure out about what do you have about an idea of what her average rate might be because she's only making even with the four percent increase. Doesn't matter. She's an twenty thousand one hundred fifty-five dollars. Right. She makes twenty-one thousand. Yes. Yeah. So. Okay. I don't have any idea how many hours that she works. I mean, I'm sure there are weeks where she works a lot more because she does all the cash yeah. reconciliations and yeah. for all of the different accounts that we have and stuff like that. Um, and then she comes in weekly to. to Sign the payroll checks and the accounts payable checks. Mm -hmm. um, so those, I think, are like the two largest yeah. tasks. Because I think as long as we're transparent and it's done throughout the organization, mm -hmm. then I don't have a problem. I just wanted to clarify that she didn't did. come in and ask for anything. That. So I don't want people to yeah. feel like it was Ellen in here saying, put me in for four. No, I'm glad just you followed the that. practice yeah. that we've gone right. That we've done in the past, and they can. You. But I still think it's a very okay. bad practice. Very good, Jim. Do you have anything? No. Um, I just, and, I, and I'm just going to throw this out because I'm not sure myself. I'm totally unsure. Should an elected official go on a warrant article for a, for a, a raise? Ellen has never been handled that way, but I don't know the answer. I'm to just that. Uh, traditionally in general. I'm saying traditionally in New Hampshire, there are two methods to give an elected official even a salary, right. stipends, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, a lot of towns have a warrant article in every warrant for every elected official that gets paid anything, and then you vote on each one of those in a single warrant article, mm. and you can amend them on the floor and so forth. Uh, other towns put it within the main budget. Mm. It depends on what the town wishes to do. And has ours always been in the main budget? Or? No, ours has not always been in the main budget. I've, I've looked at town reports back to 1906, and it's been all over the place. <laughs> so uh, there was a very long period of time, traditionally in New Hampshire, uh, up through the 1940s, where there was a separate warrant article for salaries for elected yeah. officials. Uh, but then that started changing in the larger communities, and we are the 18th largest community in the state, so it's as things went along, yeah. those things sort of changed, and they, they yeah. worked their way into the budget cycle. Yeah. I believe in Ellen's tenure, she has had the stipend. Yes. Yeah. Yes, she has. Okay. I just, just wonder. Thank you. Any other questions on this budget? I just, I just want that corrected. And on the same page, um, audit is a different budget, but just so you know, the audit services are in there. They're down 8.81%. Uh, That's from the um, proposal that you guys, we put that out to bid and had the bidders come yeah. back, and mm -hmm. you guys approved that a couple of, I don't know, it could be months now. It's been so long, I don't remember. But that was approved by the board. We did send that out to bid in there. Um, we did bring it back to the board. So the audit services are going down 8.81%. I also want to mention that, I wish I don't remember the number, but I think, Fred, did they, I know the 17 audit went so well that we had it in the budget for 31,800 and I got a phone call the day that the audit was uh, delivered to us saying that since with um, their auditor's work and the work of the finance department all working so well together that they were going to be able to honor, I believe it was the 26,000. Um, 24, 734. I think we have one charge. more bill coming though. I think we yeah. have a little bit more coming. Right. So I think it was going to be 26,000 because I think the 
portion of the 29 here is broken into two pieces, 26,000 for the actual audit and 3,000 for a single audit. And so they always have to put that in there um, because if you receive more than 750,000 mm -hmm. um, in funding grants for federal, state grants or whatever, you have to have a single audit too. So I believe that for 2017, yep. instead of being the 28, whatever it was supposed to be, it's gonna be 26,000. So we did save some money in 18 and we'll be saving money in, um, I think it's a three-year contract. So nice. the next three years yeah. we'll be saving money on the audit also. Good. So that's good news. Very and good. when we did the talk about the audit last week or the week before, Jim had asked and the board, I believe, agreed to have the auditors come in. Yeah. I did hear back from them today and they can come the 5th or whatever that following month. Not the Monday of the holiday, but the one after. I, don't, I didn't write the dates. I feel like it's the 5th so and the 15th. The 1st November? Um, of November, yeah. So they can come the 5th, I think, and the 15th. Let me look at my calendar. Is it the 15th of Monday? The 5th and the 12th? And the 12th. No, the 12th, I th let's see, November. Isn't the 12th a holiday? Maybe it was the 5th and the 19th that okay, they offered the up. The no, Thanksgiving is the only 12th. Yeah, so I think they offered up either of those uh, Monday nights. So if you want us to go back and Fred and I can look at the schedule and see which one looks yeah, I guess what the busiest, but they're willing best, to yeah. come down for either of those two nights. So. Okay. Great. The 12th is what you're talking about. I think the 12th is a holiday, so I think they were it offering up the. I think they're offering up the 5th or the 19th. Yeah, both both of those are meeting nights. So, um, I didn't know if you the board had a preference or if you just want Fred and I to get something on the calendar. But I did want to bring that up because Jim had brought that up, and I think maybe even Regina brought it up. A couple yeah, weeks I ago, think so. either one of those dates is fine by me. Yeah. Okay. Good. Now, when we were not to be, we we're with the same auto company. So. Yes. Three right. years. So, so it's good. And the reason probably that it dropped is because you do a good job. Yeah. Just give us the material you send to them is in such good form, yes? As well as w the working relationship <laughs> yeah. that we have developed. But yes. I mean, no. I mean, I think that should be pointed out. I agree with yeah. Jim on that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And also, when I was an auditor, we used to always tell people every few years, even, you know, if you think you're right with having us as a firm, which usually they did get us, you yeah. should go out and bid so that you can yeah. see what the right. pricing is and what the competition right. is. So. Right. And I also had mentioned to Regina for sure when she was in that um, the lead auditor is the same, but they do switch because we used to have Scott. Now we've had Tyler like the last Whatever. two years. So that has changed. But they also bring in lots of interns, and there's always different people. So all yeah. of the um, lower men on the totem pole, so to speak, that they bring in are a variety variety of ba backgrounds and come from different walks of life, different educations, and they ask different questions all of the time. And sometimes they'll question something that we've been doing forever, and I'll be like, neat. we've been doing yeah. that forever. So I think a lot of people always think you need to change auditors to get a different um, <laughs> perspective. view or perspective, and that's not necessarily true because I get one every single year. And I kind of <laughs> look at them sometimes, and then I'll look at Tyler and go, really? And he'll go, yeah, really, answer the question, you know, type of a thing. So you do get a variety even though it's the same firm. That's good. Thank you. Uh, if, before we take a final vote on this, I would like the salary for the treasurer recalculated for a straight 2% raise for 2019. Were we taking a vote on this tonight? Well, no. I think I she means for next week. Yeah, well, we do the she final She wants to know what the figure is. She's, okay. She doesn't, I don't want her to have to sit down and start fiddling so around do with figures now. For yes. when we vote but I will be asking that again when we do the final review. Okay. Who's next? Management Information Systems. Management. MIS. Systems. MIS is on your tab there. Yeah, it's down yeah, just a few. Got it. Got it. Green tab. All right. So this is a budget that I continue to work on each year to improve. Um, I don't know if it was last year or the year before I added the computer support line so that everyone could see better where all the licensing and all of those types of things come out of. So you can basically see it's a 5.04% increase. 2.39% mm -hmm. uh, is, is related to wages. And the remainder of it falls into the different categories. You can see we have ups and downs all over the place. So basically where one line went up, another line went down. Um, I have some lines down 32% and other lines up 38% and 35%. And then I have another line down 40%. So 
in the end, there's not much of a change. It's just spread <coughs> differently across that particular budget to better express to individuals what the money is being spent on, where it's being spent, and to provide further details because that was one thing that I've been trying to improve on year after year because everybody always wants to know more. Um, and by knowing more, the books have gotten more complicated, uh, but you get more details and stuff. So hopefully it helps other people understand the budgets a little bit better. So. Yeah. Any questions on this? I'm budget? fine with this one. With, uh, Oh, I'm fine. Thank Jen? you. I'm fine. Okay. I'm Let's go to personnel administration because it's closer to where we are. It's just two tabs down. Okay. Uh, You're trying to make life easy now, huh? Okay. I am. Because I know flower gardens are way down the back by death, yeah. so we might as well we did the flower. go in order. We did the flower gardens. No, we didn't. So we, well, well yeah, it, was it was on patriotic purposes, so I did actually bring it up right then. It was yeah. on the same page. That's the okay, same. Okay, so now we're under personnel administration. Um, there's a 1.88% increase here. The majority of these lines are all related to wages mostly. Uh, the only thing that, they're all related to wages. The only thing that can be adjusted, I guess, would, I don't really know, employee separation costs, we could adjust that if we wanted to, but we also, based on, on who we think is gonna retire, I do a calculation by reaching out to the department heads and finding out who's eligible to retire, have they heard about anyone planning to retire, and we put percentages on everyone's head, so to speak, who's eligible to retire to see who, how we think they're gonna fall, and that's kind of how we come up with that number. All of the other things um, are driving factors, Social Security, Medicare, retirement. I will report here that the New Hampshire retirement rates did go down slightly for July 1 of 19, so wow. that helped that budget a little bit. And the other thing that's in here, which I skipped right over on accident, was the merit pay. That line is put in um, all the non-union and including the planning this year, as Jason was mentioning, I believe the board had decided that, and conservation, and I put that in for 2% across the board on all of the non-union. People just might not realize what employee, employee separation costs mean. Okay, employee so separation cost is if when someone is eligible to retire, um, it would be their sick and vacation payout, so to speak. Yeah. So depending on whether they're retiring or just quitting, it would, and their union contracts would depend on, would dictate to us whether they get 25%, 50, 100, or 0% of their sick or vacation time. So, but most of the individuals, if they're eligible to retire, you will find that they do get 100% of their sick and vacation balances that are on the books. Mm. Okay, so on the merit pay raises, that includes a 2% for all non-unions next year. With the exception. With, the plan with both the planner and the... Uh, the planner, the office manager, and the planning department and the conservation coordinator. Those are the three new ones that are added. That does not include your town manager right. or your assistant town manager because they've never been on. I shouldn't say never. They have not been on that line for the past couple of years. I believe the board uh, chose a few years ago to, if they were going to adjust the manager or town manager salary to put it on their uh, regular wage line. Mm -hmm. All right, since we're not gonna be approving any budgets tonight, I'm just gonna bring this up right now because I've been thinking about it. The 27,202 that, that we've been using in the past to give determine whatever it is, 2% raise, 1% raise, whatever we decide. But rather than continuing to do that, could we maybe at some point try to use that line item that's already in the budget to try to catch some other people up? I believe the board has the right to use that line however they choose, but Fred would have a better answer to that. If you're going to reclassify employees, you would normally put that wage in their actual in their actual wage category in the actual department because it will never make it there if you use this line right. item as a problem. Like I think it makes more sense the way we put the town manager and the manager in their actual line items. That's just me, but well, you know, so maybe not. I mean, we can't obviously jump the gun on this because. We 
or in a pro this well, is the process guys, that we've been using. Yeah, but I mean, just, I think the board could do, if they chose to, though, they could move the merit onto individual budget lines, correct, Fred? Like take yeah. that 27 and disperse it? You could. Around? You could. The, the 27 gives you an earmark to where you're going to go. In a couple of instances, it has not been satisfactory enough because, of course, it changes from year to year depending on who's in there. Right. Uh, and sometimes that changes because you have new employees come in at a lower rate right. and things, things adjust. So um, that money really, after you've spent it out of this line, goes into the line where their pay is. Yeah. Right. So, in so future why not budgets. just have it there to begin with? <laughs> yeah, well, you can. I mean, you know, that's, that's what I'm just saying maybe to think about in the future. I, I think Jim has mentioned that before. I think the so, reason yeah. it's here is because you don't want to assume that you're automatically going to grant it. Because the MRI study that we had done notes that some of our employees are already pretty much okay Correct. or above the okay point, but we still have quite a few that are a lot lower. So we could spend some time trying to get everyone up to that middle range. I thought we pretty but much But I think Fred made that. a good point right there. He said if you put it on a line, then you're saying that you're giving it to that position and then if that position changes or something, you're kind of stuck. Is that kind of what you were trying what you were mentioning, Fred? No, not really. Okay. I, I, if you're talking about the wage for XYZ employee and and the personnel plan says the person should make Fifty thousand dollars a year is just an arbitrary figure, right? And the person is only making thirty-five thousand dollars a year. If you want to change that and move towards the fifty, I think you put that in their pay, individual pay category in their department. Right. You don't put yeah. it here. Right. This okay. money represents if you're going to give raises. This is the pool of money to give the raises from. And you can adjust it according to who you feel. You can, get and, and there have been times where the board has actually said, okay, we're going to overspend the line. Uh, or underspend, or... Or underspend, uh, they've mm -hmm. done both. So. Or not give to certain individuals, or like right now, um, in 18, I believe, when we had done the budget, it was going across all the employees in the rec department, but then in the end, there was new people in all the positions, so they had all gotten bumped, so then they didn't get it. So we've adjusted it in right. situations like that before being on the merit line. Okay. In regards to the MRI study though, the ones that you guys voted to do the halfway on, those are on each individual um, employee's wage line right. for right now. That's where they are. That's how the budget is presented right now, Correct. which is perfect. Yes. Thank you. In the admin column. Okay. In the administration okay. column. Mary Louise? If we're leaving this in place, there ought to be a stipulation that this would take effect April 1st. It's an understanding. Well, that's exactly like what the board has. The to, board has, the board has to vote it, and every time we've done this, the board has voted effective April one. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, they I don't gone expect back that to will change at all. I just like to <clears throat> see them because it's supposed to cor correlate to the right. raises for every other contract. Yes. And so Absolutely. Yeah. And the twenty-seven um, thousand is calculated on thirty-nine weeks, right. okay. which would right. be April one. That's okay. how it's calculated. Do we need a line you. stipulated as merit pay if we're going to be dealing with individual employee salaries? Do we need it at all? Depends on how you're dealing with them. This is strictly for an annual increase in pay if the board feels one is justified. Right. For non-union? For, for, for non all non-union yeah, employees. Non -union. Right. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else have any concerns about this one? Nope. Okay, next one. I'd say municipal, municipal insurance. insurance. Okay, I got it. So, um, there's the NHMA dues. Yep. Yep, that is there. But let me first, um, if you don't mind, it's currently at 0.47 percent um, as a whole. This municipal insurance, it's actually going to go down now, or go up. Actually, not down. Sorry, it's going to go up. Um, the health insurance, as I spoke in regards to the library, it's the same for the town. Mm -hmm. The medical plans have gone up 7.3%. Wow. The dental plans have gone up 2%. So we need to add uh, $59,322.89 to the line that says health insurance, which would bring it to um, $2,726,346. And then the bottom line here will be 
three million five hundred four thousand three eighty eight. So that's an adjustment I will make and have for you guys do for next week. But I just wanted to do, point do that, that out. again. Three million. Three million five hundred and four thousand three hundred eighty eight dollars. Three eighty eight. Thank yep. you. Okay. I don't have any problems here. I guess we're stuck with it. <laughs> One way or the other. That's about it. Okay, municipal insurance. We just do that one. We just did that. Okay, yeah. mosquito control. No, we, uh, we didn't have mosquito that control is actually on here because it didn't change. I'm looking at the yeah, yeah the mosquito list. control didn't change, so it was not on here. The other thing that's flower gardens, as um, that someone that pointed out, it was with patriotic purposes. It's five hundred dollars. It hasn't changed. Yeah, that was paired up. And then right. you get debt service. And then we have municipal debt. Yep. I always say debt is what it is. It's all things that there's nothing I put in there. It's all stuff that's been approved now by the voters. Um, is Appendix D, isn't it? Correct. Yes. And um, the principal payments are up 5.48%. Interest is down 1.14. And an overall increase of 3.77. So. I have a comment on this. With we're leaving uh, two uh, bonds behind as we leave 2018. So what? Um, let's see, the SRF project refinancing. So our last payment on that is uh, next in 19, not 18. 19. Next, in, I'm sorry, in 2019, and right. the same for the uh, wastewater treatment plant from 99. So if we look on the back page here, it shows She's in that, D. that our total indebtedness for uh, bonds is, is going to be 41 million 99,613. That includes the first phase of the wastewater treatment plant renovation, if I recall correctly, the 11 million and change. But this does not include the other two steps of the wastewater treatment plant rehab. So we are looking at a substantial burden of over $41 million for the taxpayers going up to 2042. So I would be a little cautious as to projects that need to be bonded in the future. And I would only point out in regards to that, in 2024, we lose some, uh, one more, and then 2026, we lose two more large ones, and then yeah. in 2028 we lose another one so yeah. phase two I think is out another five years if I heard correctly and then by the time it gets underway and stuff I know that the 11.78 yeah. um, according to DES they're not expecting us to start repaying that until 2023 as of right now oh okay. with their estimated completion dates so um, wow. yes it is 41 right now but that number will change because as each of these drop off well, um, it will certainly It'll be take replaced possibly with another phase, yes. maybe, if that's the way yes. the voters decide to Absolutely. Yeah, the but ceiling on our bonds is over $100 million. That's Yes. <laughs> we just did that whole well, thing we last bond. year. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we have plenty of, um, we're not, I don't believe that we're in danger of anything. Do you so. want to give us a heart attack, Fred? <laughs> well, it's there for safety reasons, but you never, you never know what's going to happen. I know. Hopefully we don't have to use it at all. Right. There. That yeah. clears us for tonight, I do believe. Well, we have a $13.8 million bond and a $6 million bond that hasn't technically hit the books yet, right? No, it hasn't. It's, so it's still building up oh, sure. to 2042. Right. So, yep. the, but like, the, and our, it, it'll go beyond that as we have new. You know, our annual payments for 20 and 21 are going to be over $2.6 million. Yeah. To pay off Correct. Tax, so. And if yep. you notice, the big jump is actually in. Uh, 2023 you go up to 3.3 yeah. yeah. so that's where when Fred and I were talking about the tax rate and stuff today which is the next topic I think but um, when we were discussing that we were pointing out that right. in 2023 
you just added, if everything stays the same as today, which we know it won't, you just added 24 cents to your tax rate. Yeah. Which is those, yeah. uh, that $800,000. So. Okay. And then, okay. Are we? so that's it for budget sections tonight. Yep. That's all I had. Thank you very so much. So I think Christy. I have the 2% um, for the treasurer and um, to change the health insurance. And those are the only changes that I recall. Is there anything that I missed on that? Um, wait a minute. Here. I'm aware of. I think that's all the board discussed. So, no, 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 no. Oh, yes, okay. So the yeah. treasurer for uh, yes. The we, treasurer we down that. to 2%. Yep. And then the. So the uh, tax collector changes that I mentioned. Tax collector, town guys. clerk, and town council are going to be next yeah. week. With, with public works next week, yes. Okay. That is All my right. understanding. All right. All right. So I have a non agenda item uh -huh. the tax rate. Um, I heard from <laughs> DRA late on Friday. They're ready to set our tax rate. I don't want to say finally, but I'll say finally. Um, so tonight I dropped a little packet on your desk because yep. I worked with them late Friday and into the early afternoon today um, to come up with what our preliminary rate is. I always point out that it's just a preliminary rate. Nothing is set in stone until the board decides what it chooses to do in regards to use of unassigned fund balance or non-use of unassigned fund balance. It's completely up to you. I expanded a little bit on this sheet here. It provides you with a little bit more history than what you've had in the past. Right. Um, That's good. The municipal rate for 2017 uh, was $6.32, and the total tax rate for the town for 2017 was $16.37. Right now, as we sit uh, doing nothing, <laughs> meaning using none of the assigned fund balance, the municipal portion goes down to $6.27, so it's down about five cents. And the overall tax rate for the town goes up to 17.02. Uh, the breakdown there, the increase is related to the local education and I, their bond payments coming on. So their rate actually went up 0 0.68 cents, so 68 cents a thousand. So um, <coughs> that kind of gives you the breakdown. So basically in the second chart there, it shows you the estimated is right now at 627. And then if you use 250,000, 500, or 750 or a million, it gives you the breakdown of what the tax rate would, the municipal portion would go down by. Um, shows you how much fund balance that we have and then what the retention guidelines are according to DRA and what the town management recommends, which is the 5% recommendation from DRA plus your outstanding taxes, which I did get from the tax collector as of today, is the $1,065,150. So um, that would bring the fund balance retention to $4,367,459. Wow. And then I did provide some additional sheets for you just showing you how much fund balance has used in the past, the years that we didn't use fund balance, um, how much our unassigned fund balance has been. And you can see in the past couple of years, it's been 7.43%, 9.8%, 10.18%. Um, and then like I just pointed out to you, Fred and I are looking to the future and I think even Regina pointed out that the debt payments are going up year after year. So um, in future years, it may be helpful to have some of this unassigned fund balance available to offset the taxes then because the school portion's already going up because of the bond that was passed and the right. voters, right. you know, voted for that. So that's not a bad thing, but it's just affecting the tax rate. And now um, the municipal portion actually went down, but in the next out by like 2023, the municipal portion will be going up um, because we will be taking on more debt in those years. Yeah. So I just don't know if Fred has anything else to add to that, but that kind of gives you my rundown from a financial standpoint. Yeah. Excellent. Only if you're going to uh, try to keep the, the municipal portion of the tax rate as stable as possible, you need to use as little of this surplus this year as you can. Right. Uh, from a political standpoint, 
uh, you're going to have to chunk a lot of money in in the next two and three years in order to keep things stable. Mm -hmm. If you spend it now, you will not have it. Right. And from looking at our current budget, I believe, Madam Director, that uh, <laughs> if I remember your admonition today, we are within a, a little less than $70,000 of the bottom line of the budget mm -hmm. on a pro rata basis for this time of the year. Yeah. Yeah, so we're seventy thousand dollars to the plus, where we should be somewhere between four and five hundred thousand yeah. dollars to the plus. Yeah. So we're going to have a very scant year putting money in surplus this coming year. Yes, unless something changes drastically, because like Fred said, usually at this point, because I am working to get the end of September financials done right now. I've been so busy on budgets that kind of got put to the side, but I worked on them last night, and we're about sixty-two or sixty-nine, I think, thousand to the good mm -hmm. right now or under budget which is very slim when i come to you when i think it's probably next week my financials are on you'll see that net last year we were probably at like three four five hundred thousand so um yeah. we're still sleeping right now but in next month or the month after if we're at that narrow over margin that's when we all stop sleeping so mm -hmm. um and those know. are the financials through september correct those so. are only through september so we still have three more months but if we keep on track all mm -hmm. Fred, i think is trying to point out is that we're not going to be under budget in the significant way that we may have been last year. I think last year we ended with like 700,000 or something or 500,000. Yeah. So this year it looks like it's gonna be a lot closer of the end of year. So it's no more rail okay. trails. So being do, do we have by. to vote on this now? If the board would like, the tax collector um, would definitely like to get those tax bills out. I'm sure the treasurer will soon agree with her because as of right now, if the board votes tonight and we get a tax rate, it will probably be Tuesday or Wednesday before we get it, and the bills will be due, I think she said, around the 6th of December. If we wait another week and you guys wait till next week oh, to make a decision, the tax the bills wouldn't be due till she thinks between the 13th and 15th. These are only guesstimates right now. Yeah. We don't know that she has a new, yeah. print, a new bill printer um, who's going to need a few more days to print them, but it all depends on, um, first, how fast we get the tax rate, but I'm been pretty I've been assured that we'd probably have it by Wednesday at the latest mm -hmm. um, and then I think she said Ed was coming in on Thursday so he'd be able to run from um, he'd be able to run the warrant and then we'd get it off to the bill printer and our best guess is that taxes would be due around December 6th or 7th and if we wait a week she's guessing about the 15th or so and those are just guesses I want to point out one thing first because yes. I took my July bill before I came in tonight. And so the tax rate for the town, per your estimate, yes. is going to be five cents less. It's yes. going to drop from 6.32 to 6.27. Yes. That's if the board chooses to do nothing, yes. Right. That's if the way it's, it would That's stand right now. That's the preliminary rate nothing. that we received from DRA today, yes. Okay. So. The county, I'm assuming, is that still a dollar? The county is going to be up two cents. I did my own little breakdown. Municipal will be down five cents. The county will be up two cents. The local education will be up 0. 0.68 or 68 cents. And then the state education is at zero. Okay, so. From that's comparing 17 to the preliminary for 18. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if the board is ready. I'm ready to vote tonight. I think we should take the advice of the town manager. He's uh steady the tax rate for us at the town level and i think we need to keep it that way we're going to be having we're going to be getting hit with some real borrowing expense i'd just like to hear a specific motion with your thoughts okay. incorporating. Yeah, so. I, I have some questions first. yeah okay. Good. i, I think jim yeah um so currently our unassigned as of 12 31 17 the unassigned balance seven million four hundred ninety nine thousand four seventy seven yes and subtract from that 420 Yes. Okay. Which gives us an unassigned balance of seven million seventy nine four seventy four seventy seven. Yep. Okay. Which is what percent? It's uh let's see here. It's right on here. I think it's like ten point seven two. Ten point seven two. Yes. And the, the recommended is between five and seventeen. Yes. Okay. From Plus DRA the, from the, DRA guidelines, yes. Right, 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 right. So their minimum would be 3.3 .3 and their highest is 11.2. Okay, and we don't expect to be able to put anything into that this year, right? I 
well, we hopefully we will be able really to small. put maybe something small. in there because if we don't, I yeah. will right. be very stressed out. So but yeah, that, it'll be small good. though. Is our best guess correct, Fred? <laughs> a couple hundred. We're gonna maybe. we're gonna try to put everything we can in there because we're gonna shut money off starting tomorrow. Okay. Okay. But that's there are certain things we just have to do. Yeah, you don't I mean, know about snow. Snow is coming, heat's coming, etc., yeah. etc. Right. So, but I mean, so that that gives us still a decent little nest buffer. egg. Yeah. And we should most likely this year leave it there since we're going down anyways. That that's would be my your advice. That's your advice. I agree. I would love to do it with a full board here, but if we if the tax yeah. bill has to get out, I'm ready also. And I'm ready also. Yeah. I just want to hear the specific wording of the motion. Okay, so I make the motion that we will not offset. I would just say that I would make a motion to not um, use any of the unassigned fund balance fund to balance. offset the tax rate. Okay, I will make a motion to not use any Does of the unassigned good, fund friend? balance to offset the tax rate for 2018. That. Okay, I'm in favor. Okay, all in favor. Okay. Okay. And that is all I had, I think, unless someone has something else. Thank you okay. very much. All right. Thank, Thank you, you Christy, very much. Uh oh, Fred. Okay, got next we have out. old business. Old business. Does anyone have anything under old business? Yes, uh, oh, new business. You have nothing under old? No, I don't have anything. Okay. okay. I, What's that for? Do we need uh, to for next week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jim, you anything? Nope. You want a motion on the blacksmith tools? Oh, we would love a motion on those. They're, they're yeah. a gift. Yeah. Are we under new business now? I thought I was still under old, no? Nope. Nothing under old. Okay. Well, I have something under old. There you go. See? All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you want to do the blacksmith stuff? Well, old business. We already settled the agenda thing. Mark's working on that for the November 1st meeting. Yeah. I just had a question on a letter we got, which I cannot find. It was in regards to a P's and HDOT meeting about the bridge that's coming up, I think, on <laughs> Thursday night. The bridge. Is that for residents or members of uh, Sun Valley? I got the notification. I somewhere. think that was from the P's authority. Yes. For the businesses in the, in the harbor. Yeah, okay, so there. that's a community meeting they're having for that? It is, for the, for the businesses, yes. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be over at the uh, Seabrook Precinct building. Uh, okay, because I know they had talked about that at the uh, DOT public hearing. So. Yes, yeah. they did. Yeah. Okay. All right, great. Thank you. All right, now new business, donation of blacksmith tools for blacksmiths. I move to accept the donation. Second. All those in favor? All right. Make the uh, comment, Madam Chairman, that uh, earlier this evening we had a gentleman come in concerned about um, yeah. the overgrowth at uh, North Beach. the North Beach uh, area. And we just can't mow that down. We're going to have to selectively go in and cut by hand the weeds because there, in fact, are marsh grass in here. And we're prohibited by law from cutting that. Yeah. So we're going to have to go in and treat that area by hand in order to get something done, yeah. which is very going to be very intensive. So I will talk to Recreation tomorrow since this is their area of, of um, concern and their maintenance area and see what we can get done in the short term to start this process. Yeah. Well, is it blocking a walkway? I'll have to go look. I, I, I know I've walked down there before and things are tight because they tend to grow and yeah. get higher in the yeah. summertime than weeds do. Um, but they also die out in the, in the fall, in the, in the summer, the winter. So uh, I'll go down and take a look tomorrow and see what's there. Yeah, yeah because, you know, the, it is valuable to have the, uh, the growth in to keep the sand areas in place. to keep the sand in place. Oh, yeah, it's very valuable. And, of course, we try to get as much marsh grass growing down there as mm -hmm. we possibly can to do that. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll go down and try to do some selective thinning. Yeah. Yeah. Get the weeds out of there so that we can get more marsh grass instead yeah. of weeds. I'd like to point out, too, that um, on Ocean Boulevard at Boar's Head, you can't even walk down the sidewalks because of those uh, rose bushes and uh, stuff. You, you know, speaking of not being able to get by, yeah. you cannot walk on the sidewalk. Right. Yeah. Is that the east side or the west side? The 
West Side. The West Side. It's the yeah. state's the job to do walk. it, but I believe the town <laughs> did it in recent years. Oh, you yeah. mean right around the corner? Right to be twi- Yeah. I mean, yeah, just so look at it. You can't even you can't even walk on it. Yeah. I was there today. Yeah, it grows out. The, those r- roses grow out very well. Yeah, they love and it now there. they're it's right now all of those reeds or whatever have gone to like a hay. I mean, a, um, yeah, no, the fragmites. They're, they're in bud. The tassels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now so they're very dangerous. There's, you don't le- wanna... there's less than a foot of sidewalk left. Oh God. Yeah. And it's close just, enough down yeah, there as it is without that. I just remember, I think that North uh, Beach, Joe Billy Brown Park area. Um, took a lot of damage last it did. winter. Yeah. A lot of damage. Yeah, it did. And God knows what this winter will do. Hopefully nothing. Keep and our fingers what crossed. What time is the meeting on the November 1st? Yeah, I don't know what I did with that notice. I want to say that it was... November 1st? Yeah, the one was... Oh, seven. November 1st is at 7. Seven. Oh, we, okay. Yeah. We're going to get an, are we gonna yes, get an agenda My at all? My is you're going to get an agenda. Yes. That's good. Yeah. Since I've been making a pest of myself. No, you just asked a question. That's all. Is that's, that it? That's yeah. fine. Make a motion to adjourn at 2047. Okay. <laughs> I knew that Super. was coming. There Thank is. you, Fred, very much. Yeah, Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You and Christy have been knocking yourselves out.